Hi. I started up a new laboratory at Tohoku University here in Sendai almost 20 years ago. I was appointed as a young professor in aerospace engineering department. At the very beginning, in order to encourage my students, I set the goal of our research, that is to fly our dreams into space. Speaking about the dreams, as my background is robotics, our specific dreams are to the development of robots for exploration of unknown. To fly anything, we need a rocket. So visited the United States and started collaboration with a group of amateur rocketry people to fly our payloads. This US-Japan joint project was named ARIS, a rocket launch for international student satellites. The launch site is Black Rock Desert in Nevada State. The rocket uh, can fly up to the sky of the 4,000 meter altitude, not yet outer space. However, this project gives a unique opportunity for students to run real process of the de development of the space system. Speaking about the payrolls, a standard size for this project is about 350 milliliter soda pop can size. Therefore, this project was nicknamed Cancelled Project. There are, this is a picture of the launch and descending by using parachute. So, um, the Cancelled Project started 1999 and today. The idea has spread all over the world. Various colors of soda pop can were launched into the sky. And the upper air, in the upper air, they measured the temperature and the pressure, took pictures, transmit by radio. Students learned a number of precious lessons from this project. And the next step is to the flight real outer space. For, this, for the space flight, 10 by 10 by 10 centimeter cubic format with just one kilogram of mass was proposed. Today, this format is known as CubeSat. My students in Tohoku University also developed an extensive size of a CubeSat, which has a camera on board. As a very unique opportunity, it was put into orbit from the International Space Station by Japanese astronaut. This is the picture of the Earth, but can you find teeny, tiny cubic satellite in this picture? These are the student-made satellites. And these are the images taken by our CubeSat RICO. This is the very moment that my first dream came true. A student-built satellite worked out properly in the space environment, taking pictures, transmit the data to the ground station. But our dreams are never ending. We keep developing the bigger satellites, which has more capability to conduct significant science of remote sensing. Toward this new goal, my student worked so hard and did amazing job. Now the new satellite is um, 50 centimeter in size. The weight is about 50 kilograms. This format is called microsatellite. And this is our first microsatellite rising. And five years later, we completed rising two. Then the question is how we can go to the space. The answer is piggyback launch. The Japanese space agency, JAXA, kindly offers shared launching opportunity for microsatellites. Here we see GOSAT, that is a JAXA's huge, expensive satellite, more than 1,000 kilograms, several hundred million dollars. And you can find how small our microsatellite is. It's a small addition to them but a great opportunity for us. 
The launch was very beautiful for Rising 1 on January 2009, and for the Rising 2, May 2014. Both satellites are now in orbit, and particularly Rising 2 is making remarkable achievements. And these are the pictures of the Earth with a wide-angle camera on board. The image quality is now much improved. A huge typhoon was also captured by our onboard camera. And this is the comparison between our rising two imagery on right and the one taken by Japanese meteorological satellite on left. Now, a um, student-made university satellite can compete with professional large-scale satellite. Rising 2 also has a color telescope camera across up the landscape of the city and the houses and rice field in Japan. This is a five-meter resolution image that is a top-of-the-world class result in this format of microsatellite. That's amazing, and we are so happy. Now, our challenge to the microsatellite resulted successful, smaller, cheaper, faster development, speaking about the cost, 100 down to 1. Yet, the amazing quality is good enough for the various remote sensing missions. With um, one single satellite, the coverage of the Earth is very limited. But uh, if you have $100 million budget, I recommend you not to have one large, expensive satellite but instead, you, you should have 48 microsatellites. These satellites can cover the entire globe continuously, seamlessly. In this way, we can make 24 hours monitoring of the Earth, disaster monitoring network, for example. Now, our dreams are never ending. So going back to Nevada, after a successful project cancelled, we came up with another new idea. That is a um, student competition uh, for the um, micro rovers. So um, to be, uh, we asked students to build a robot launched by rocket, then asked them to come back home autonomously. The robot can fly by a para parafoil over travel over the surface after landing. My student made a, such a two-wheel robot design because this shape can fit in a cylindrical shape of the rocket. The mass is just about a one kilogram, same as CubeSat. Between two wheels, there is a battery, computer, sensors, motors. It has everything. Every year, when new students are enrolled in my laboratory, I asked them to build a new robot rover. Then a few years later, the design became more sophisticated. This is a video clip of the student challenge in 2008. Very beautiful launch and parachute. And after landing, yes. robot automatically autonomously cut out the parachute module because it is not useful on the ground. Then start the surface locomotion and traveling velocity is really high. That's cool. And guided by the GPS coordinate, the robot travels towards the gold flag. But the ground surface is not always easy. So it automatically try to get out. Try to get out and finally it got the gold flag. And everybody was so excited. So the, this is a result of the seven years revolution of student project. So and today 
I am very happy to bring our brand new model of the uh, rover with the name of Tetris on this stage. So please come over here. Okay. So um, yes, it's very cute and very nicely designed. So this is um, our recent field um, testing video in the Japanese sand dune with uh, one step previous version of this Tetris. And yes, it has an onboard camera. And onboard camera image is, yes, so exciting. Now, our dream is to bring this robot onto the surface of the moon. Our driving force is the Google Luna X Prize. This is a worldwide competition sponsored by Google for a 30 million US dollar cash prize in total. The requirement is you need to be a non-government entity, send a robot to the moon, travel over the, travel over the surface more than 500 meters, then transmit high quality images. The rule is simple, but it's not easy to achieve. As of today, 18 teams from a number of the different countries are competing. And I am very honored to say that there is one Japanese team, which is currently in the leading group of this challenging race. That is Team Hakuto. The Hakuto means a white rabbit living on the moon. Shiro Usagi in Japanese. The Team Hakuto recently announced two rover models for the proof of flight ready technology. One is nicknamed Moonraker, and the other is this one, Tetris. So our rovers are very small, and, but uh, have great potential. The, this Tetris is just about uh, two kilograms, yet advanced technologies are fully implemented in these small bodies. For example, this wheel is made by super strength plastic materials with 3D printing technology. We operate these two rovers in such a way connected by a tether. The X Prize rule does not specify the traveling locations, but we have an exciting destination. That is caves. In 2007, Japanese lunar orbiter Kaguya discovered small holes on the surface of the moon, and scientists speculate them as opening holes or a skylight for the underground lunar tubes. Natural tunnels and caves, those places are very good for the future human settlement. In terms of the moderate temperature and natural protection from the cosmic radiation and meteorite impact. The idea for the cave exploration is simple. On the edge of the hole, the bigger rover stays as an anchor, and the smaller rover, Tetris, goes down in hole. So this video clip shows this idea. This is a demonstration in a small cliff, but the same idea will work in deeper vertical holes. After the underground, underground exploration, this baby rover can be retrieved by winding up the tether. So XPRIZE encourages non-government players to challenge innovative technology and new business. Space programs are not for the limited number of the elite members, but should be open to everybody to participate. Open competition will certainly change the old-fashioned space business. Still, the reality is space programs are huge and super expensive and slow in progress and kind of off-limits and kind of dinosaur. But microsatellites and micro-rovers can change the games. 
There are a number of the good ideas for small, low-cost, and agile space programs. Most important thing is lower the threshold and increase the number of the new players, particularly bring young people. Now the space is very close to your reach. Hands-on satellites and hands-on rovers can make it happen. Please join us. Let's share the excitement with everybody. Thank you.